What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today we are safety wiring the rear brake so stick around. Hey everybody, welcome back to the garage and I'm actually shooting on one of these new GoPro 9s so let me know what you think. Hopefully, finally, GoPro has created a camera that even my shaky butt can hold and vlog for you guys. Uh, and today we're going into safety wiring. So we have our two-piece drum and rotor, some 30, uh, 32 thousandths safety wire. This is aircraft grade safety wire. About 12 bucks for this uh, aircraft stainless wire and then we got my trusty but old beat up safety wire pliers and this is the smaller size of the two they make a larger size i prefer the smaller size but the big thing about it is is we've got to safety wire these in place so they don't back out and it's kind of an art form right luckily i learned this whenever i was in the air force back in the day and i remember enough to be dangerous or at least enough to get these properly safety wired on the first thing these are torqued down to 120 foot pounds but some of these whenever they're torqued down the hole through the cap screw here goes straight into this crevice right there. It's just not ideal. So I went ahead and turned all of them so they are aligned kind of on the outside perimeter. That way we could actually get in here and do some safety wiring on it. Now, uh, you know, some of these guys that are artistic can come through here, do all of these and have one continuous run on there. That's not really ideal on this setup. Let me get the camera set up here so you can see what's going on. And if we come over here like so, bingo. Okay, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and pull out a significant amount of safety wire to make sure that we can get from our first bolt to our second bolt. We'll trim it off long enough to make sure it doesn't pop back in there. And then we're gonna go ahead and straighten this out. We wanna get kind of the curves out of it to make it easier to work with. So whenever we do this, the idea is that whenever the safety wire is on here, we can't unscrew the bolt. And so we need to come from a side, the far side, and we're gonna try and kind of S-loop it. It gets a little bit difficult because we can't take the braid, the twist, all the way around through this little crevice here. It's just too tight. There's not enough room to get around there, but we can uh, make sure that we line our wires at the outside wire that comes around uh, because we start our twist here and we'll end our twist there. The outside wire that we come around with is in a way that it is going to be pulling uh, so neither of these can be loosened whenever it's all said and done. So first things first, we're going to go ahead and just feed our wire through here. Once again, here comes the shakes. There we go. And luckily, even being a shaky person like I am, I can still do this. And we want to go about to the halfway point. And this is the first critical step, and that is wrapping the wire around the bolt head nice and tight. And we're going to have to push it down in there. Then... We want the one that we just wrapped around to go on the bottom side here. Grab your pliers, oh, a couple inches maybe down, shorter than the distance between the two. You don't want to grab it all the way down here because we want to twist the stop before we get to the point where we would land the other one. We'll lock our wires in, and we're going to just give this thing a nice pull. We want it to be tight whenever we twist it. So now we can pull back on the handle over here. I don't know if you can even see it here. Pull back on our handle on the back side here, right there, and I'm gonna twist it. Now we're looking for seven twists per inch. The spec is generally six to eight twists, and that's pretty good. Maybe could be a little bit tighter. One, two, four, five, six. So that's on the short side of it, and that's probably about good right there. So what we'll do after that then, is we wanna wrap it around the bolt head. As I said, in a way that this bolt cannot turn that direction and we'll come over to our next hole where we're going to land it and we want to grab it just short the holes on this side of the cap screw we want to grab it just short with our pliers because you don't ever want to over twist once you've twisted you're really not supposed to untwist the wire so we'll twist this one up till it has the same consistency of the rest and ideally, you'll come up just a little bit short, and then you've gotta make the, the uh, decision on whether or not you wanna manually twist it one more time, or if you wanna pull it through. This one, I think, if we just kinda of get one more half twist on there, then feed this wire through, the one that just crossed over the top, 
we can pull it tight and we should be able to see if we have any slack in the wire and we don't that's perfect that's a nice tight uh, twist on that one and then we can feed our wire around the top of the bolt much in the same way so it's hard to do this and stay out of the way we've ran our wire on the top side of it now we go ahead and grab the remainder with our wires get it nice and tight and see it's wanting to walk over well hell let's try it let's start over it's not a good one We're going to try and feed it through the back side. I just don't think that we have enough room to really do that. But we've got plenty of safety wire to keep practicing this to make sure that we get it right the first time. Because this is important. This is a safety uh, device, you know. Some side cutters would probably make it easier to get this off. We could probably just give her a couple twists. This wire breaks pretty easily. That's why it's important that you never untwist a twist that you've done. And we'll give it another go here. Same ordeal, we'll pull out a decent amount of wire, long enough to make it all the way. Feed it through. Wrap it around. And it's important to remember whenever you twist wire, it's always gonna twist clockwise. So because of that, the one that you wrap around, as I said, you want to go underneath this wire here before you start putting your twist on. And it's also really important to make sure that you do this kind of initial pull to tighten everything up to it and pull it in a way that it twists back to the hole at the end there. Now the question is going to be whether or not we can S-curve this around because this is going to be a pain. So I'm going to go to about right there. Hopefully you can see, we'll go to about right there. And that's pretty close. It's pretty close. And in fact, if we separate the two and we look at the one that's coming over the top, that's going to be pretty good. Now, said the hard part is going to be getting this thing down underneath and around this cap bolt. So, pull that. I use a screwdriver to kind of help work the wire around this bolt head. and now you should be able to start this twist okay that's not too bad as I said not ideal I don't like that there's a little bit of slop in the wire I wish this was pulled a little bit tighter. It's hard though to get it around that way. But the thing about it is, if we were to loosen one of these up, which you know you're not going to actually do. There, it's going to pull that slack out. It's always a good idea to take your tail that's hanging off here and bend it over to make sure you don't have a sharp point sticking out. It's a little less critical whenever you're talking about a brake drum or brake rotor in this case that's not going to be in there but we can curl that over give us a nice smooth area and it's not the prettiest but it's functional it'll work so let's do it one more time real quick so you can see the steps over again get a little bit of wire straighten it Start our feed through.
Okay, once again, we're gonna go around the clockwise around the outside and underneath our wire that we fed through there. Give it a nice pull, keep everything nice and tight. Twist, seven twists per inch. Continue to wrap it around the head, come down, measure out our length for our next one. And you have to remember that uh, these will pull a little short whenever you do this. So in saying that, that means that as we twist the wire, the total length will shorten up a little bit. Keep that in mind as you go through this. And then now that we're on the second one, we're pretty close. But if we go ahead and finish the next wrap and then use this one, remember we're always using the one that's going over the top to feed into our next hole, we should be good. So we'll go ahead and start this one through and then after we start it through, we'll try and tuck this wire in so we have a perfect S wrap. tucked in there bring our next one in it's gonna go over the top on this one and one of the things that you'll learn as you do more of this is kind of the pull angles to get these things to pull up tight on the bolt holes things like that and that one actually turned out a little bit better a little bit tighter Trim off our tail. Twist it around. There we go. So, it's another one done. That's safety wiring for you. As I said, take your time. Practice. Practice makes perfect on this kind of stuff. And this is one of the said one of the harder situations having a scallop in there right there that we're trying to wrap that s wrap around really kind of a pain in the butt now the calipers a lot easier whenever it comes to do them because they're just two two big bolts on the back side that will be able to easily s wrap but it's the same process it's all about making sure that the wire is putting tension against it unscrewing so if we're going counterclockwise to unscrew it we want the, the wire to wrap around clockwise on both sides of it Hopefully that helps somebody out. Uh, not the best at safety wiring. As I said, it's been a solid decade since I really did a lot of safety wiring. Used to have to safety wire everything. Uh, there is instructions whenever you buy this stuff, but sometimes it's just nice to see somebody actually do something like this to kind of show you the process of what goes through doing safety wire things like that so i'm gonna get back to finishing up these rear brakes uh listen i didn't shoot a video on assembling these rear brakes if you do want to see a video on doing that go check out Liv scafidi's channel i'll try and put a link in the corner or down below she did them on a uh firebird same setup except mine doesn't have the uh, internal parking brakes and the two two piece rotor as opposed to the single piece rotor so uh, it's real straightforward man you just uh Drain the fluid, pull the axles out, you know, pull the C-clips, pull the axles out, uh, take the backing plates of the drums off, put the new uh, plates on. The cool thing about these, you can remove these mounting brackets. Let's take a look at them real quick. Uh, you can remove these mounting brackets with the axles in because they are notched on the top side. So that's kind of a nice change on this setup, Is it, but you do have to take the axles out to get uh, the backing place for the drum brakes out of there. And then later on, I'll be talking about setting up these parking brakes because I've got to get a specific bracket that molts, bolts up to these two holes right here. And basically it just replaces this piece right here, but it has a section that goes up over here to mount that parking brake from. So I'm gonna get back to it. You guys know the drill, ABT, always be tuning.